Hey everyone, it's Lisa Bonjean from Primitive Gatherings. And today I am here with my sewing buddy, Kathy Decker, and she has an amazing tutorial for us today. You are gonna so love this. But first, I wanna talk a little bit about how I met you and okay. some of the other things that you do so they know how awesome you are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have now have been sewing together actually like once a month for how long, what, three years? Three or four, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I first met Kathy a long time ago. You'll have to probably tell us how Between many. Between 1995 and 2000. Yeah, because that's when Kathy had a shop in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin called? Um, Gingerbread. Gingerbread. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't say you'd ask me questions I said, like this. I said the first couple of minutes are going to be a little stressful, but yeah. after we go, everybody will calm down a little bit because this is really okay. nerve wracking when it you is. do this. Don't ask me my time. name. I don't know. And, I, and we, we talked about this, that we, we all know you don't care about us. You just want to know all the stuff. So we will get to that. But I want Kathy to share some of her projects that she's stitched these last couple of years, like just in the last couple of years, you've been really doing a lot of wool applique. Haven't yes. You? Well, I, I've been doing a lot of wool applique ever since you started Primitive Gatherings, which was what? When? Uh, 2004. If you ask me a question, I get to ask you one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I've been doing a lot of wool applique since then. And actually we sold some wool applique at our store, um, you know, prior to 2000, but it was really just barely getting started then. Right. Yeah. Cause it was kind of in the, not so popular. Yeah, you know, like and, nobody really knew too much about it. And they're like, yeah. what do you mean you can put wool on a quilt? Yeah. And yeah. Is, is it supposed to be all splotchy like this? Yeah, that, that was a lot of questions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's definitely. So I was your yeah, customer now. and now you're my customer, yeah. but now we're buddies too. Yeah. So, so she does a lot of cool things and she volunteered to do this tutorial for us and it's amazing. So let's talk about a couple of quilts. So in the background here, we're going to talk about this one first. This is uh, my crazy yeah, life. My crazy life, yeah. And that was the summer block of the week about four years ago. Well, it was 2016 because I put some election things in here <laughs> because I thought, you know, we're going to remember this 2016 election forever. So that's my crazy life. This is one of my most favorite quilts. And it's a lot, it looks a lot more complicated than what it really is because this is a square on point. And then all we did is sew some strips onto the sides of the square. And then we trimmed it to a square. So it's like a square and a square. And then when we sewed them all together, we fused these melon shapes over the seam line here. So it really looks complicated, but it's not. It is, no, no, yeah. it wasn't complicated. And then it has tons of embroidery on everything, which is a lot of fun. It's tedious, yes. but it's so worth it. I really like it when we are doing the same embroidery a for a lot because you can just sit down you've only got the one ball of thread the one needle and you know you can take it with you wherever yeah and i think i did mine in rows did you do yours in rows do you remember i don't remember yeah okay so that was my crazy life that was one of our designs that we do as a summer block of the week and if you're not familiar with summer block of the week just hang around long enough it'll start in may and june we'll start talking about it again but what is this beautiful thing? This was the Farmhouse Threads mystery quilt probably three years ago, maybe. Yeah, so there is a Facebook group called Farmhouse and Friends, and we currently are just starting a brand new one of these. So it's called Let It Snow, and it just started March 1st. So Kathy does a lot of these, and what those are are each designer, there's 12 designers, will do a free block and we also sell kits to our blocks, but the pattern is free. So sometimes people make it out of their own or sometimes they buy the kit from the designer, which really helps support the designer's efforts in putting out these free blocks. So this one, would you remember the name of this one or what it was called? I don't remember. Um, it was something about a garden. Yeah, I know this was my block. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but Kathy, this was your design, right? Well, um, Partially, the the block designers gave us um, this this top part as as yeah, a finishing. Rhonda, but, but I did um, these because I I really like this uh, this line of the, your flannel. Yes, these are flannel on this one, so that's why. And Kathy, I want to point out, does all her own quilting as well, so she is super talented. But wool applique on all these beautiful flannels and. Don't be afraid to try that. Or if you're new to that, 
just hang around with us and we'll we'll keep teaching you how to do it all. But this last one here, or not last one, we have another one. But if you want to go talk about that okay. one. This one was another of the farmhouse um, friend, or farmhouse and friends mystery quilt. And each designer did a um, crazy quilt block. And these are pretty big blocks. I think they're like 16. And so this was Lisa's. And you could buy the kit for, for each of those, or you could use your own wools. And um, I pretty much used, I think, the same, the layout um, that was given for this. It, you know, the, it says spring and summer down here, and then the other side says fall and winter. And you've got three blocks for each season. So, so these three are the spring, and this is summer. And I imagine most of the stores still have these on their websites. Yeah, the designers and, have their blocks available. And yet. their kits and everything. Mm -hmm. So if you still wanted to go back and do this, you probably could. Or just get the patterns, too. Mm-hmm. Yep. So those are three of them. And then she has another one here that we couldn't hang up because we are in my studio here at home. Oh, barn upside down. This one was my favorite one. I this think. was your favorite? Okay. Yeah. This was a, was this Wooly Block Adventure or what was this one? Oh, it may have been. Yeah. I now think that you so. say that, it probably was Wooly Block Adventure. And again, each store gave a free pattern. This was Lisa's from Primitive Gatherings. And I think that's still available, isn't it? I think we put you it in, in a pillow. We put it in one of the uh, Americana books. I think Star okay. and Stripe Gatherings yeah. as okay. a pillow. Yep. And then I did my own um, design for the setting on this one. Right. Look at this. Look at those eagles in the corner. It's just amazing. And this is regular cotton with the wool applique. So there's nothing wrong with mixing flannel or you know wools with cotton or wools with flannel you can do whatever you want there are really no rules in any of that or homespuns as well so yeah and like i pointed out she's doing all this machine quilting too right yeah i did and yeah. then i used linda's linda hershka's rulers to design the the little swags for the side yeah, too linda's so. website is the quilted pineapple.com and she has all those curved uh, machine quilting rulers and they work great for design too here should we show them the bottom half yeah so there's the bottom half so see she's very worthy of <laughs> all what she's going to teach you sorry i didn't so mean we, to just we've established that to you. as a crafter yes okay <laughs> right yeah <laughs> We've, we've laid the foundation. Okay. Okay, so, so we should start. Should we so, should show them. So we're going to make this pin drum. This came about because, like everybody else, I've been home for a year. <laughs> and I was looking for some different things to do. So I've been looking around. Um, I do cross stitch also. And um, a lot of the um, cross stitchers use sawdust for stuffing. So I wanted to try that. So I asked Lisa for some sawdust. And... So that's what we're putting in the pin drum. It takes um, a fair amount. You really pack it tight, but I really like the the, the feel, the, the texture it gives you. Yeah, it, it's really kind of a, a firm feel. So versus sand, right? Mm -hmm. The sand tends to. It's hard to get enough in that that it stays firm. Okay. You know, it, it settles down after a while. So far, the sawdust is really not because I packed it in there so tight. I think. All right. So what do you normally put in your pin cushions? Because I normally put. Sand I like in. sand. Okay. Um, I guess in order of priority now, I would choose sawdust, then sand, then um, walnut shells, and then fiber fill. Okay. That's, that's so, and sometimes people use a combination. And you can. Yeah. Like I, I started using like the lint from the wool when we felt mm -hmm. it and put a little bit of sand with that as well. Yeah. And I kind of like the feel of that sometimes. Yeah. It just kind of depends on what you want. But for this, I really wanted it to stand straight, you know, and not be sagging yeah, in the middle or yeah. Slow yeah. Out or be too heavy that it pushes yeah. it out and it's, it's not real heavy it's kind of almost like the texture of a softball yeah all right and just fyi it, we do sell this and not everybody has access to sawdust right? right so we did have scotty collect this for a while for us uh all those frames and all those quilt hangers Here's the sawdust from yeah. it. And it's very super fine, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. And you guys need to, to order this because Scotty thinks we're crazy, I think. <laughs> and we need to prove him wrong. Yeah, we need to, we need to sell <laughs> we said, lots of sawdust. This. Yeah. He's like, who, why yeah, would you why? sell this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so are we ready to All start? right, so we this is our, yep. Yeah. All right, so um, just FYI, the pattern for this 
design is going to be on my blog, lisabonjean.com. So you're going to go there and you're going to be able to print out the PDF. There's like a big bar that says click here for pattern. It'll download to your computer or your device and then you can print it from there. So Kathy is very generous of writing this pattern and pattern writing, she said, is what? Oh, it's awful. It took me all week to write this pattern. You know, because you can do things pretty easily, but to describe it on paper of, you know, how to gather a, a thread around something, it, it takes some some words. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And it's not the, the fun thing to do when we not do really, this, right? Know. So, yeah. So just know that that's where you're going to go get the pattern. And, of course, we're going to tell you, like, all the things that Kathy uses. And if you want to support us by buying some of those things from us, you know that we appreciate that. So, I, and then we also know that you all can't buy everything that we have. We get that. But what the, some of the things that you can do is when you're on YouTube, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you watch the videos because we get credit for that. And that really helps us out a lot in other ways besides spending money with primitive gatherings. Okay. Okay. I think we're ready now. Ready to go? Yep. Okay. You don't need a lot of uh, supplies for this. You'll need a charm pack or some scraps, or you could buy one of these and then you'll have enough for 26. Uh, a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah More so, pin drums than you'll need. Yeah, so we time. have this 6 by 10 charm pack um, that Primitive Gatherings has, and you need 6 inches, so a regular yeah. charm pack. It's just a little short. Yeah, I tried it with that, and it was just a little too tight to, to gather. And so. that is flannel. Yeah, I used flannel, but not always. I also made um, a model with just plain cotton, and that worked too. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let's start. You cut your charm your charms into one and a half by five inch pieces and you'll need 12 of them so you just sew you know flip them over sew a quarter of an inch down down the side so then you'll have six sets of two lay them back out i just do it that way just for speed of you know that i'm not getting up and down from my machine and pressing and everything and then just sew them so that they're all 12 sewn in a line okay Press your seams open. That'll help you with your um, stitching. Mm -hmm. Everything's nice and flat then. And then once you've done that, um, are we, we okay on, on this? Um, once you've um, sewn these together, pressed them open, run a line of stay stitching along the top and the bottom about a, an eighth of an inch from the edge. And that'll keep your seams from popping open while you're doing all your um, decorative stitching. That's important because, you know, this gets rolled around a lot while you're stitching mm -hmm. with it. Okay. So once you've got that and you've got your stay stitching line, you're ready to do your decorative stitching. Oh, okay. So let's, um, there's one here, this one. So do we want to talk about the stitches? And sure. Everything? Okay. So here's where I started. And all the stitches on this, I think, are in the pattern, right? Okay. So you do it when it's still when it's still flat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's easy to work with. Yep. Okay. So um, you'll this is fly stitch, mm -hmm. and then this is just a cross stitch X. This is herringbone, mm -hmm. right? Feather, chevron, right? Yep. Right. Um, this is just a, a variation of blanket stitch yep. where each like the stitch they're like stair stepped. I just use my clover chalk pen and I draw a line at like an eighth and a fourth and three eighths and that way I know how far up and down to make each of these and then once I got to the bottom I just did an angled stitch back up to the top mm -hmm. this is cretin right yeah yep. cretin that's mm -hmm. how you say that yep. and it's just done twice you do it down once and then do it again in the gaps that were created by the first one so I kind of like that one because it makes those squares in there. Yeah. This is a fan stitch. I think that stumped you a little on finding a, a thing. Yeah. Um, what I the way I did it was I just made a big blanket stitch and then I went back and put a V in the yeah. in the corner of each one. Yeah. So that's all that is. This is a sheaf stitch where you do three um, straight stitches and then you kind of gather them up with a stitch in the center there. I like I think it should be called haystack stitch. Okay. <laughs> Well, and actually, it should be called spider stitch because I did it on this one, and look how much that looks like a spider. Oh, yeah. If you did four four at a time, that would make a great spider. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so 
that. This is Lazy Daisy. Lisa just did a thing on Lazy Daisy. They're, they're just in groups of three. And this is a thorn stitch, I believe. Yep. You probably don't have that one. Yep. Yep. You've got oh, okay. And this is maidenhair stitch, which is just a variation of blanket stitch also. Okay. okay. So one of the things, if you're not familiar with doing a lot of these embroidery stitches, is we do have um, 24 and 22 chenille needles that help you uh, do those stitches with the embroidery um, floss or, or um, pearl cottons. And then we also have a couple other things for you. These are stencils that help you like draw the dots and stuff where if you're not very good at spacing and stuff right. like that. So these are really nice tools for that. And you don't have to do the stitches I did. If you've got those templates and you want to try some new stitches, right. do anything you want. Can you grab that? This, and then this book this. also has tons and tons and tons of embroidery stitches. So you can pick your own favorites. And then, of course, my book is kind of basic on how to do all the basic stitches. And it gives you a really nice step-by-step -step photographs of those stitches. So not just a diagram. So this book really shows you every movement of the thread and the needle. So those are a couple little things that will help you with your embroidery stitches. And like I said, we like to use the Valdani pearl right. cottons and, and the pearl cottons in the eights and the five weights, I think make nicer stitches. Big. I like 12. So <laughs> Lisa and I don't always agree on everything. So Which is this, good, this is one right? of them. Which is good. So, I used all 12. You did? They look thick. Yeah. Now, you're, people are going to look at this and go, wait a minute, this isn't what she just showed. That's because Lisa had my model, and I couldn't remember what I did. So I just got out the book and, and did some stitches. So if you're looking at the model, there may be some different things on here. So you can, you can, I like that one. yeah, just, um, you know, grab your, your book of stitches and, and do whatever. And if you've never done any of this, once you start doing it, you get really you do. good at it and you get really obsessed with it. Yeah. Like you're actually, I'm actually like, you're looking for stuff. Yeah, to I'm like crazy upset stitch. when I'm done sometimes. Yeah. Like, oh man, this was so fun. But yeah. And this is a great project to get started on because you only have, you know, 12, yeah. 12 things you got to do. And, not and they're, not, investment. Yeah, they're not real yeah. long. If you hate the stitch, you only got to do five inches of it. So, you know, it's not so bad. So cool. once once your piece is all stitched, you've got each each seam covered. We'll take it and press um, a quarter of an inch down on the top and the bottom. I'm gonna even press that steam on there. <laughs> yep, you can. Try to keep your seams open. Of course, yeah. you'll you'll have it'll be easy to do because you've already stitched. You know, this yeah. one doesn't have the stitches. So. Right. Okay, and then you want to take a piece of fusible interfacing. And I believe you have that for sale yep. on your site. We we like to use the 911FF from Pelham. Yeah. And what you want is you want a piece that's about a quarter of an inch narrower than your uh, stitched piece and a quarter of an inch less this way. Okay, so it's hidden inside. It's, it's hidden inside, but it'll keep your uh, seam down. So... Once you've done this and you've cut this, if you cut it according to the pattern and it's too big, just trim your interfacing so that it just fits. Yeah. Like so. Yeah. And so. now the, whoops, pull that down a little bit. So it would look like this. Yeah. So then you're just going to press, press there all along here. And um, use your instructions that come with your interfacing. Like mine says use a press cloth, which obviously I'm not, but... Okay. should be. And At this point, I would pull out my press cloth and, um, you know, lay that on there and really give it a good steam if, if that's what your interfacing um, says to do. Yeah. Okay. Oops. Yeah, but almost. Yeah, almost. Yeah. That's can, what happens on live video. There you go. See, <laughs> you can fix anything if you, right. if you do it fast enough. Exactly. I want to do a tutorial on how to get um, fusible web off of your background when you well, let misplace yeah. something. So the fusible, this this fusible interfacing, it does a couple things. It stabilizes this to make it make it a lot more firm. 
And it also covers up all these seam lines so that when you put the sawdust in, they're not going to leak out through the seam lines. Yeah, through the holes, yeah. You've pressed the seams open, so, you know, it could gap. Cool. Okay, so now you'll take this and run a quarter inch seam right along there and then press that open. So now you'll have a thing that looks like this, except yours will have stripes here where the fabric is. Mm -hmm. Take take that one little piece of interfacing that I said to cut at one, and a, a one by four and a quarter, and we're gonna put that over this last seam. So now all of your seams will be enclosed in interfacing. A little piece right here. Okay. So now your sawdust is not going to leak out. So yeah, it'll look like this when you're when you're done. That's that was my last seam. It's a little patch. Before you do this interfacing, though, you should probably turn this outside and and do this last stitching. Okay. I should have said that. Um, you could do it now too, but it'd be easier if you from closing the yeah from yeah. closing it. Do your stitching and then put the interfacing on. Okay. Okay. Yep. So that's it. You've got your body of your drum made already. Cool. Okay, so now we can set that aside and we'll do the top and the bottom. So the top and the bottom will look like this. And when we put it together, it'll be like that. Okay, so. How did you get there? How did I get here? <laughs> Here's how I got here. Um, there's a um, lady named Vonna Pfeiffer who does, um, she's a professional cross stitch finisher. And she does tutorials on how to finish things into pin drums and pin cushions and things. Her focus is cross stitch, but she had a great tutorial on how to finish pin drums. So we're going to use her techniques um, to do this. Yep. And I really appreciate what was her name again? Vanna Pfeiffer and her site is the Twisted Stitcher. There you go. And she does some excellent tutorials and um, I would have never known how to do this if I hadn't done that. So I really appreciate her sharing that. So to make the top and the bottom, I've got threads everywhere. So in the, is it in the pattern? What? These circles? The circles are in the pattern. We'll need to, to uh, do two three and seven eighths inch circles out of mat board. Okay, and that's right here. And if you have never used mat board, what that is is the um, board that comes that's around pictures and picture frames. So framers sell this. And you can also buy it at any store that sells framing supplies like uh, um, Hobby Lobby or mm -hmm. Michaels or whatever. Lisa also had some of this chipboard that I think would work. And I think she thought these came in the bottom of a uh, layer cake. Layer cake. <laughs> so, you know, if you want to recycle, you could do this. The main thing is you want some cardboard that's really, this, this really just doesn't even bend. So, you know, this is, this is pretty good but you don't want something flimsy like a cereal box or something because okay. that won't hold up. All right, so a nice grade cardboard. Nice grade cardboard. The mat board is the best thing, I think. Um, it's not expensive. I bought some on Amazon. It was maybe $1.25 a sheet. Oh, is this big? Yeah. Okay, I, I got uh, 25 sheets for $32 or something like that. Wow. So, so it's not expensive and you'll use it, I think, once you've got it. All right, so we need to cut two, three, seven, eights, three and seven eighths for the bottom and the oh, top. Did I take your pattern? Probably, but that's okay. You that's, know what you're That's doing. my notes. Yeah, where did I do it? I screwed up your notes. Where were that's they? It. I don't know. There? No. You would laugh if you saw my notes, probably. No, I don't know. We're doing okay. I didn't see it. You're good? Okay, yeah. yeah. So we'll cut. Your two two circles, three and seven eighths. Now you can lay these on your uh, fabric for your top and bottom, and and cut around it about an inch around that. So is that, is that the five and seven that's, eighths? Yes, that's okay. the five and seven eighths that is in the pattern. So you've got uh, circle templates in your pattern for for both of these things. So you'll need to to cut this about five and seven eighths. Could be six. I mean, this is not critical because all we're doing is gathering this oh, around that. It's so rocket science. it's not rocket science. A lot of this isn't. So, you know, it, close enough is good enough. Okay. So you'll do that. And now you'll take one of these and you'll put your sheep on there. So do you want to talk about just how to do the wool applique? Sure. So in your pattern, there is the appliques for the sheep. 
and you would trace these onto fusible web and then apply that to the wool, then cut it out on the line after it is adhered. And then you would peel the paper off the back, iron it to your circle, steam, always keeping your iron moving up and down. And then you would stitch around it with the thread, pearl cotton. I try to, I try to match it. And then once that's all done, you would put two colonial knots for eyeballs. Yes. And like I said, we have lots of videos on all these stitches, on the blanket stitch, on the colonial knots, and all those other ones on my YouTube channel. You want to show it up nice and close? Okay. And this, if you don't have any wool at home, we do want to point out that you can, if we, there, we have some flannel pieces like this, or you could just use flannel too, I would right. think, because it doesn't have to be wool. No. Right, but we do have this pre-made panel from one of my fabric lines, or just use flannel for your sheep, for your wool. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be wool. Right. Yep. It's just cute. It doesn't have to be a sheep for that matter. Right, yeah. If you have a different shape you want to put on here, go for it. Yep. Anything, and she's going to yeah. show you lots of ideas at the end. I can't yeah. wait for her to show you more than just this. Well, I've been a little obsessed with these. You know, <laughs> being home all this time, it's like okay, something different. Okay, we also need to cut a bunch of um, batting. Mm. And what the batting does, you'll have several layers in this top to make this puffy top. And then you'll have one layer in the bottom just to kind of cushion that. And you want that because that's where your pins are going. That's where your pins are going. Yeah. They can also go in the sides too. Okay. Actually, my pin drums are just going to sit on a shelf and look pretty. So They're pretty. <laughs> it, it's, it's more just decorative than it is functional, but you could use, you, you can. And, and you do want this, you know, rounded because it's cute that way. Okay, so what you want to cut, for the bottom you want one, three and seven eighths. So you can just use this um, this thing that you cut as your template and draw around your batting. And you're using wool batting? I use wool batting. What you want, and this is a good, another recycling thing, just grab your extra pieces off the edges of your quilt. Mm -hmm. You know that stuff you cut off like this? Even regular batting? You or could, just you could use, no, you could use cotton. Okay. I, I like the wool because it's just, Gives Wait, it a and you more use loft. it a lot in your, I use yeah. wool a lot because um, I like how it quilts up. Um, so, you know, these these four inch edges that you have to have to long arm quilt, yeah. they're just kind of wasted. So perfect. You've got that. you've got if you save them, you've got enough to make four million pin drums. <laughs> okay. So you've got your one for the bottom. Then for the top, you cut two three and seven eighths, and a three and three quarter. Three and a half, three and a quarter, three, two and three quarters. So basically you're just dropping down in quarter inch increments. For this? So that it rounds nicely. If you just made them all this size side, it's, it's just gonna go kind of up and okay. you know, you want it more rounded. So you're making the concave with that. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's a nice Is it visual. Concave or convex. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. So there they okay. all are. So here they all are. Let's um I need a needle. Like a needle? A, just a, a applique needle. Yeah. One thing I do to kind of corral these is take a little piece of thread. Otherwise, they're a little. It's a little harder to to do when you go to put it all together. Take this. Start from the the biggest and just stack them onto your needle right, more or less in the center. And all we're doing is just stacking them and we're gonna sew them kind of together so that they don't shift when you when you go to put it in your, uh, in the top, top, yeah. So quiet. I know. <laughs> they, call that, they call that dead air. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so you just got a, a nice little pyramid of um, wool, circles. wool circles and just go back down through the center and you can just kind of tie it. So if you can grab that again, wool is kind of, it shreds, doesn't it? There you go. I just kind of tie it together. And that'll just make it a little easier to, to deal with this later when you put it inside your uh, top. Okay, then take these, your, your circles. I put a piece of double stick tape on it 
and we'll stick this top pyramid on one and on the other one we'll put the the one piece of batting for the bottom okay so now you'll take your your two wool circles one of these will have a sheep or whatever and one will just be plain you want to use some really heavy duty thread and you want a long piece, like probably two yards. So okay. oh, like an upholstery thread, if you can find some Colts and Clark upholstery thread, this is a Guterman 100% um, polyester. So you really got to not be able to break it, right? Right. Yeah. Because we're going to be pulling this tight. We're going to pull it tight around this and then we're going to lace it. And that'll keep everything together and, and uh, it, it won't come yeah. apart then if the thread breaks or anything. So I'll let you do this one if you want. You want okay. to do it about halfway between the edge and the, the line. Use um, stitches, quarter inch, quarter, stitches, quarter inch stitches and about a quarter inch between the stitches. So we'll let Lisa do that one. And I've got one that's already done. You can kind of see, can you can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. it's, it's already got the stitching on it. So for the back uh, or the bottom of the pin drum, you'll take your piece that just has the one piece of batting, lay it batting side down, take your thread and pull it up tight like that. And now take a look at it. Make sure you don't have any funny business here on the edge, like tucks or pleats or whatever. If you're happy with that, then maintain the tension on this piece of thread and just go back and forth across this kind of in a star shape. Are you watching this so that you can do it on yours? Yeah. Okay. I got the video. <laughs> I don't need to pay that close attention. <laughs> Everybody will have the video now. Yeah. The world will be full of sheep pin drums. Oh. Maybe. You know, or else you'll watch this and think, well, no, I'm not doing all that. Well, I don't think this is hard at all. This will be good. No, it isn't hard. It, it's it's much less effort than you think and a lot more fun. Kathy, can you take a break and show me that up close, what you have there? The, what the star, I, what you're doing. What I'm doing? Yep. Okay, I'm just going back and forth again across the, the mat board mm -hmm. and catching the edge. Um, you can go kind of far in. Um, it's, it's kind of a good idea, I think, kind of to go in almost as far as your stitching line okay. and just kind of move around the circle, you know, in a kind of a star shape or zigzag shape. So, so from here, I would go probably down there. And I just use, um, use my whole thread. Okay. So what is the reason this is so long? Because you're doing all this lacing. Oh, okay. With the same thread. With okay. the same thread. Yeah, so you don't want to break your Lisa, thread. Let's, can you do that close up? So now, do I once I get or almost to the beginning? Does yeah, it matter? Take where... one more stitch to to be almost to the beginning. Like almost, so fall short a little bit. Yeah, that's okay. good. Pull that through. Don't break your thread. Can you show me up close? Okay. So now Lisa's got the top. So this would be the piece with the sheep on it. So we'll take our little batting pyramid. You kind of need to hold hold the edges of this down because it, it kind of wants to poof up. Hold that down, push down on it, and now pull your gathering thread around it. That's awesome. And now you can do this one. Maintain your um, tension on that and take a look at the other side. Make sure you like how it looks. Whoops. Like how it looks all the way around. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. and then yeah, pull it, pull so it good I'll and tight. Just start and just go kind of back and back and forth, kind of you know from there go over to here maybe, whatever. I probably overdo this a little bit. Your your thread maybe didn't need to be quite so long. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. So you just kind of go like across it. Yeah, you're just lacing it good so that it you know, is, is on there. And you can tell this one has a lot more lacing than that one. I probably ran out of thread and decided good enough. So that's how you make the top and the bottom. Wasn't that easy? Mm -hmm. So now you're ready to assemble this. 
you need to decide which is your is your top edge. For me, the top edge, I want my um, these fly stitches to go up. So this is the top edge. So I, I want my the sheep side on here and then this side on the bottom. So lay that face down. Take your sheep, put him in face first, and push him all the way through to the bottom. Not all the way through, all the way to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> You'll do this a few times. So you can see how, can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. How I'm just kind of pushing it through. You want it to get it just to the edge here. And then you take some pins and go straight through your edge of your drum into the edge of that top. And this is where that nice folded edge really pays off because it's already there. You don't have to worry about any um, raw edges sticking out. So this, this part's pretty easy. You'll just do this all the way around. I like these magic pins because they're very sturdy and easy to grab. Yeah, and those just came out, like, I think within the year or so. Those yeah. are fairly new on the market. So if you don't have those, those are so worth yeah, it, Yeah, they, they really are. So put the pins in. And you're not really sticking it into the, the pins into the cardboard. You're really kind of just sticking them into the batting. Does that look good? Yes. Okay. Is that enough, you think? Yep. So, so just I, make kind of a, a knot or a, you know. So I always make a loop and then go through like twice and then I pull it tight. So that's you how show I, me your bottom, the bottom right now. Okay, so what I do is when you want to end is I just grab some fabric and make a loop and then take your needle and go through the loop twice the same direction and that will knot it off. And then I just kind of bury one more and then cut it off. So my sheep is all pinned into place and you'll catch your thread on every single one of these pins. That's part of the fun. So just remember that <laughs> doing this for fun. <laughs> if you set your expectations that way, it might not be quite so aggravating. Just know it'll happen yeah. right? once or twice. So now you'll take um, your, whatever you sewed your pin drum with probably is, is the thread you want. You want something that matches this. I'm going to use a contrasting thread just so you can see what I'm doing. But, but for doing this, you'll want so like, something I, I would fine, like your Aurafil yeah. 50 weight. Yeah. Just your regular sewing thread. And I love this color. I've been using that a lot yeah, lately. 330. You want to thread my needle? Sure. You see better than me. I'll take a break. You want to show me up close the pins? Uh huh. I want to see like the seam of that. Oh. Yeah. Right, like that. Yep. And you want to just give it a twist? Do you want a knot in the bottom? Perfect. How's that? Yep. Okay. Yep. So now we're just going to whip stitch this um, this uh, drum to the top. Two edges. Yep. So again, I've got a, a contrasting thread, so it's real easy to see. You don't want to use big stitches, although we'll cover this up later with the decorative stitching anyway. But I'm just basically, that was a terrible stitch. Like a little whip stitch, huh? Yeah, just them? a little whip stitch. to. And you, when you do that, you're keeping your thread so it doesn't interlock with that pin, I see, right? Yeah. You're kind well, of throwing I'm trying, it off. Yeah. You're kind of throwing it off to the side there. <laughs> yeah, so and as you can, there. yeah, I'm, I'm not doing a very good job here, but um, well, because we're, we're yeah, putting the pressure on yeah, you. Exactly. I, I would make these kind of short, maybe an eighth of an inch apart. You know, you, you they really, really hide. They really hide. If you're using the uh, matching thread, um, let's show this one. Um, this one, I don't know if you can see that, but see, you really can't even see the stitches on that because it's using the black thread. Yep. So you're just going straight across both yep. of them, right? Mm -hmm. So... Just do that all the way around. And then the top is Secure. on. Cool. Okay. So that's that. So now, one more step. And I had to leave myself a note because I, I keep forgetting this one. Once you've got your top on, you've, you've done your, your whip stitching all the way around. You would have a sheep on here, probably. 
Yeah, I like how she pinned that on there yeah. so she knew. Uh, yeah. Turn it inside out and be careful not to bend your mat board. It doesn't bend easily, but you know, just be careful with it. And what I want to do on this is I want to put strips of interfacing around this top so that the, the sawdust can't leak out there either. Is that what these are? Yes. Okay. That's what those are. So this is a little, little tricky with a big iron, but you can do it. You just have to be really careful. Put it on this part first, iron it down, and then turn it and iron it onto here. Um, if you have a little iron, like, you know, like one of these, the little guys for, for applique or a little travel iron, that would be a good time to use this because the, the big iron, you know, you, you run a risk of burning yourself, but it's not too bad. I usually end up just using my big iron because it's on and easy and to work. Well. And you'll need to do this in uh, about three strips because you're going around and the circle. just the edge, like just on the, the rim. Edge, just on the rim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then once you've, I, I've already done that on this one, right. so you can kind of see, and it, it looks messy, but it's, it's going to be inside. So this is what it looked like before, and uh -huh. then she puts that right on the yeah. edge. Okay. Yeah, and, and that just covers up that last seam, so the sawdust won't leak out there either. Okay, so now we're ready to stuff mm. with your sawdust. Are we going to do it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And we do double bag this for your protection. It smells like Scotty's room. Yeah, I need to wipe my nose. My allergies are kicking in, I guess. <clears throat> Get off camera for that. Okay, here's what I've learned about working with sawdust. It's messy. So what you want to do, or not quite, not quite there yet. You got to deal with the messy part first. Okay. What I decided to do was to cover this with press and seal. The first one I did, I just made a mess and I had sawdust everywhere and it's it's hard to get out of the fabric once you've got it in. So take some press and seal. If you're not familiar with press and seal, it's in the grocery store with the aluminum foil and it's it's got a, a sticky side and a not sticky side. So we're just going to take the sticky side and adhere it right to the fabric. Okay, so you'll have to do the two pieces because one is not enough to do the whole thing. Oh, so you're doing that so the sawdust doesn't embed in the fibers yeah. of your well, panel. Well, it doesn't get dirty while okay. we're while yeah. we're doing this. While you're doing that, Kathy, mm -hmm. we have a question about your iron. What is the brand? This the seam yeah. station. Yep. Oh, the, the, the seam one. station the, is the, the, Rowenta. The, yeah, the little one. This one. Yep. Dritz. 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 Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm sure. Um, you want to show them your little little, little panas oh, almost. Is it a Panasonic or what? a little Sunbeam? Sunbeam. Those would work well too. I like these because you have steam in them. Right. If you need yeah. it. And and that's a good size for this too because yep. you know you just need to be careful not to burn yourself. Now for the second piece of um, press and seal. I'm just putting it all the way around and I'm going to put it about a quarter of an inch down into the top. You don't want it very far because you're going to have to pull this out later with sawdust hanging on to it. So you don't want, you know, that much sticking down in the... So this is all these little tips and tricks yeah. that, that you, you don't know, write in directions probably. But... Well, no, because... <laughs> yeah. And I tried to find some YouTube tutorials on what to do with sawdust, and nobody's written one apparently because I couldn't find much at all. It was just fill it with sawdust. Well, yeah. Are there advantages to using sawdust versus other things? Well, I just like the texture of it. She like the feel of the, the feel of the whole thing when yeah. it's done. And I'll show you at the end some some that are done with different things, and you can kind of judge for yourself what you think. Okay. Once this is all covered. I've got a lot going on down here. That's okay. <laughs> Smash it down really well. Like a shower cap. Exactly. So that it, it really is kind of stuck to your... That's brilliant. Family. I know. <laughs> it's a patent pending. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now we're ready to stuff. The sawdust is messy. So put down a towel. And you'll just do about an inch or an inch and a half at a time. 
and pack it down good. It's kind of like doing brown sugar, you know, how you dump yeah. it in the thing and then you pack it down and then you put a whole lot more in. So we'll put in about, oh, it's a little bit, that's okay, about an inch. The other thing, you can see how that kind of poofed up. You want to kind of sneak up on this because if you just shove your hand in there, it's going to poof up in your face and you're going to sneeze and knock the whole mess on the floor. So we'll sneak up on it and start pressing this down <laughs> into what? I love it. <laughs> so really, on this first pass, you want to really press it down into the corners. I don't know if you can kind of see that. Um, I'm, I'm kind of putting my fingers clear, you know, to, to really press that down into that seam. Like so. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So, so pack it in really well. Put some muscle in it. Not the time to be dainty. See how that kind of just uh, packed down? It's not not nearly fluffy like it was. It's a little bit on the top, but not so much. So you're going to pack down every. I'm going to add. So? I'm going to add an inch or so, and try not to spill it everywhere. And see when you when you first dump it in, it's kind of fluffy, powdery, powdery. Okay. So now I'm just going to pack that down. So you're going to keep doing that? I'm going to keep doing this until it's filled clear to this top. Should I do my commercial? You can do your commercial break now. Okay. <laughs> if people have a question about this, it's the same same thing. Dump right. it in, sneak up on it, press it down, dump in some more. Okay. So while Kathy's stuffing her pin cushion, um, I have a few things that the girls at the warehouse and store have put together. Kind of a little... You all know that we're going to be moving pretty soon. So we, um, the girls wanted to do Fat Quarter Palooza. So what they've done is for a little bit of inventory reduction on special for our live here today, they put 24 Fat Quarters in this priority mailer. And the, the Fat Quarters are all different colors and patterns and all that kind of stuff. So here's all 24 of them. And the best thing about it, it's $50 plus whatever it is to ship this mailer. I don't know for sure, but I'm sure it's not that much. So it's a nice deal. If you're looking to up your fat quarter stash, this helps us reduce our inventory so we don't have to move it all to our new location when we start moving in a month or two. So the girls came up with Fat Quarter Palooza and that is on our website. And I just want to point out that it's under Live with Lisa and you can only have this in your cart. This cannot be bought with any other offer because it's already going to be packed in this mailer and it's already a dealer. So just FYI, keep that in mind that this is its own little thing itself. So super good deal on those. Okay, and then I also have an announcement that we do have some of these thread kits, project thread, whatever you want to call it, totes, boxes, for a very short time. We don't have a large number of them, but the company did find us a couple more of these. So... Um, they're also, if you do put this in your cart, this is an extra $5 for shipping this so it doesn't get broke. So like if your order is under $100 and there's $5.99 applied to your shipping order, it will be $11.99. So order some other things. Don't just order the box. But there will be a $5 extra charge because we have to protect that box so it doesn't get broken in the shipping. And then last... One of the things I really have to concentrate on is organization and keeping track of what I need to work on next. And one of the things that has really helped me with that is writing down my to-do list, writing down what's going on. And I just want you to know that there's so many cool organizers out there for quilters. And I just want to share them with you. Kim Deal has an awesome one. It just has blank pages in it. It has recipes. So it's just kind of a little thing to keep your thoughts down. And then, of course, tons of inspiration 
on Kim's projects and stuff like that. But lots of recipes in this book. And then these are all on the Live with Lisa button. So that's where you'll look for them. Sue Spargo has a blank one, has some graph paper in, but nothing but inspiration and blank pages. And then, of course, I have one. And this one is where I write down, it's not dated. So I write down whatever's going on. And then it also has little things like yardage you're looking for, places you want to go, why do you quilt. So it has all these little itty bitty um, things in it, along with a bunch of inspiration again, that was all shot here at my home on Anchor Point. And then Sherry McConnell has a really cool monthly planner that helps you plan everything you need, your goals, your patterns, your rule, your notion inventory, um, lists for things, inspiration, just tons of information in this one. So again, there's calendars, reviewing your goals, showing where you are. So I think there's a bunch of tools here to help you keep your life organized or keep your sewing organized, whatever you prefer. But I just wanted to let you know about those organizational tools that we have. And look at that. We're just in time. Just about. You got to see the rest of the more, stuffing going on here. One more brief commercial. So it takes one commercial break to stuff a pen <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're, we're about to the top. So you want to keep going until you're pretty much level with the top. And then I kind of heap it up a little bit in the center because then you're going to put your, the, the base on and it'll kind of squish out a little bit. So let's do that. And this pin cushion has used two bags plus a little bit more of the sawdust. So now we know you'd need three if you're going to make this size. Okay. So that's done. Now this step I didn't put in the pattern, but I've I kind of do it at home. So I'll I'll tell you guys this one. Is that too. what this is? Oh yeah. Already got one. I was gonna just, ask you what that was. Just for. take a piece of fabric, any fabric, and we're going to take this and just kind of tuck it in under that um oh she hook. Tuck it in like that, and that'll just kind of keep the sawdust corralled while you're doing the, the base. So it stays in there? It stays in there. Okay. You could also use batting for this. If okay. you've got it a little extra, see your sawdust is trying to sneak out. Well, I just figured out what this was for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, despite how clean you try to be, yep. you know, you're still going to get a little bit on it. Yep. You're wondering why I brought my toothbrush. Yeah. How long is she staying? I'm anyway? like, does she really have to brush her teeth during this? <laughs> We're wondering if you can use walnut shells for you, inside of a pin cushion. You can, and we'll talk about that in a bit. I'll show you one that's done with walnut shells. Perfect. Okay. Uh, any other questions before I do this? Not part? yet. Okay. So this is a little bit rounded up, but not too much. Okay. And you're going to take the bottom piece that you made that just had the one piece of batting. Ideally, you'd probably wash your hands before you start this because, see, I'm getting sawdust on it. Push that into place. And then just like you did on the top, you're going to put your pins. Now, one extra step, you need to kind of pull this um, lip, the, oh, the lip of this um, press, and, press seal. and seal out. You may need to cut it a little so that it just kind of tears. It folds out pretty easily, you know, because you only put a quarter of an inch down in there. Mm -hmm. So you're going to put your pins in again, just like you did at the top. It, it goes in through the side here and into the into the bottom of the drum. And you want to put quite a few pins because you don't want a sawdust explosion at this point. Lisa, going back to your um, Fat Quarter Palooza, mm -hmm. when will those be on the site? 
they are already on the site under Live with Lisa. They're already there, $50 plus, just maybe can answer what the shipping is on that envelope, but we can't get any more in there, so it's a super cool deal. Mm -hmm. okay. So they're less than $2 each, actually. 26 for 50? Yeah. And we all know that fat quarters are usually $3 or more. Okay, you want to finish this and I'll go wash my hands so that I can do the next part. I'm kind of sawdusty. Pressure's on. I got to do is. it right. You didn't know you were going to get this. I know. If I would have known my hands were going to get in there, I might have taken time to get my nails done. So you'll have to forgive me for my crappy nails. It's doing too much fun stuff. I can insert mine. Then yours won't look so bad. Mine well, mine are bad because I have the, the like, dip nails and then when yeah. you take them off they look oh, yeah. really bad so how's it going well just do my best i can <laughs> oh here this was my grandmother's crochet oh, yeah, that works really good uh-huh it's seen a lot of action in the quilting room with stuffing and Everything. I think it was uh, hand carved because it's not even. Yeah, and so you like antique shops. You find those. Mm -hmm. I found a couple of them. There. Oh. I hope I'm getting that. Yeah. I, well, it just needs to hold it long enough for you to whip stitch it. Okay. So now you're going to do just like you did on the top. You're going to take your needle and thread and. Um, just the this kind of thread, the your matching lightweight thread, and you're going to whip stitch around this just like you did on the top. You can take this off now if you want to, or you can. I usually do my whip stitching and get it all together because you know, you never know. What's okay, do you want to get starting to sew it or not? You can. Okay, so this we'll, we'll let you do it so we can see if I oh if sure I told you well enough for. We got this really good you scissors to do it. Too here. On this one, did I say go around twice? No. Okay. I, I go around twice because this is the only seam that doesn't have any like interfacing to keep the sawdust from coming out. So mm -hmm. I, I whip stitch all the way around twice with pretty small whip stitches. See, I'd be tempted like to double my thread. <laughs> you can if you want. <laughs> So do you just bury the knot uh -huh. in? Yeah. So I'm just going to bury the knot and come out on that top lip. Yeah. And just make small whip stitches all the way around and try to catch your thread on every pin as you do it because that's important. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was one word you missed out on. Try not to catch it. You kind of use your body to brace it. You do, yeah. Yeah, take the pins out as you come to them. And the last half goes a lot better than the first half. Yeah, it's quite easy to do. It is. It's kind of fun, isn't it? Yeah. This whole thing I thought was pretty fun. It's amazing. They're going to they're going to love look how this. fast we I mean, I know we didn't do all the stitching here, but we put it together in less than an hour. Cuz it looks super complicated. It really does look a lot more complicated than it is. All right, so you just keep doing that. You just all keep the way doing on. that. You can either do that or we can okay. move on to other things. Now, at this point, you know, she would finish um, what's oh, you need uh, just finish whip stitching all the way around, go around again, and then you can just peel your um, press and seal off. It'll peel off really easily. And then you're ready for your decorative stitching. But the whole thing's done at that point. You don't have to do decorative stitching, but if you want to, you mean on the edge? On the edge. You're going to do a decorative stitch to cover up that um, the whip stitching lines. Which one real close? What is mm -hmm. the name of yours? This is a Palestrina stitch. And here's where you should use Lisa's favorite five and eight <laughs> weight <laughs> threads. Because I use 12 and it's really not too bold. And I wish it had been a little bit more so. Yeah. So I would use a, a bigger thread if you've got something that matches. Can you see that okay? Can, yep. And then do you want to turn it just a tad bit? Yep. And you 
give it a little twirl so we can see all the sides. Okay, pretty. Alternately, there are other stitches you could do um, for these edges. One thing I thought that could be okay for these is to make the twisted cord. Like I believe Lisa has a um, video on how to make the twisted cord. This is just uh, floss. Mm -hmm. You can also make it with Valdani. I've done that. Yeah. And that looks okay too. And then just, you know, kind of lay that on here and just stitch, stitch it, it in down, place. stitch it in place. So you would yeah. just like whip over the top. I of probably that, right? would with a matching and, like, thread. Or one strand of that floss too would work great yeah. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Either can one. Can I see that tool again, Lisa? So this is the Krynik. Yeah, I think that's. Yeah. And it, this is a according maker. So you would hook your flosses onto this. And if we don't have a video on this, we will make one. But it's super cool and a lot of fun to do. So um, write this on our list, Kaylee, to make sure that we do have a video on how to use this. But I have some ornaments that I made uh, a few years back that use that as the edge. All right, now all the fun stuff. The fun stuff. She gets to show you all of them that she has What happens made. when you trap me in my house for a year? This is, <laughs> this is it. Yep. This pin cushion was in one of our wool boxes and it's stuffed with sawdust and you can see it's just really firm and flat and there's there's not really much give to it. Right. And I like it. And then of course the, the pins just go right in. So that's why I prefer the sawdust over any other thing right now. This mm -hmm. one has a different decorative edge. You can see this is a feather stitch. So, so that's an option too for around the the rim here. And what I've been doing with my pin cushions that I stuff with either sand or sawdust now is I put a piece of that fusible interfacing on the back sides of those wool pieces. So then that helps with that migrating through. Okay. Instead yeah. of a muslin bag. Yeah. So sometimes I just iron yeah. that right this, on. This, yeah, like we did here. Yeah. yeah. So okay. that instead of a muslin lining, uh -huh. just that just seems to be really, really okay. easy to do. So that's with sawdust. This was the first pin drum I made that I made such a mess with the sawdust with, and you can see why once you see it. This is just a crazy quilt piece, you know, and you saw how we make this. It's just a flat piece, so you can decorate easily it. decorate it, sew your buttons on and everything like that before you um, sew it into the circle. I've got my little Boyd's bear. He's been hanging around my sewing room for years. I decided he needs to be somewhere so I don't All lose All those him. little trinkets <laughs> that we collect. Yeah, charms, and just little the... charms and things. I started putting a charm with a year on it on my pin cushions too, mm -hmm. just so I can remember. And then I used wool for the top of this one. Mm -hmm. And then again, the Palestrina stitches around the edge. Cool. And this one is full of sawdust until you get down to here and then it's sand. So you can definitely tell a difference in the texture. Where oh it, yeah. Where the it sawdust stops. is mm -hmm. much better. Much yeah. firm. More it's firm. firm. More firm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, what else you got? This one was in our a wool box. I don't remember what it's called. Um, you probably still got it. Do you have it as yeah, a pattern now? It's, it's a pattern on our yeah. website, yeah. And it comes with these cute little cheap buttons. And I, I stuffed this one with um, sawdust. And then this one has, it's hard to oh. see, kind of, it's feather stitch around the, yep. the top. And that's the, bottom. the one that looks like the chicken foot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's an option. Yeah, that's that a too. really nice option, too. Mm -hmm. Cool. Can I give it a twirl? Perfect. This one I made out of the new book, American, American Gatherings. Gatherings. It's the pincushion in there. It the I believe the pincushion in the book has the USA and then one star on each side, right? Yep. Or maybe two. And then I just added some additional stars to, to make it the size I want it. Now, we need to talk a little bit about math. So yep. everybody shut off their computer just now, right? <laughs> <laughs> to to determine how you want to make it, it's the same, we want to make this, you don't really know what size you want to make it. We're talking about, you have this flat piece and it makes a circle, but how do you know what size to cut your circle? That's Correct. what you're going to tell mm -hmm. them how to figure yep. out. Okay, um, where's my tape measure? Yeah, over there. Okay, there's two ways you can go about this. You can make your flat piece and then measure it and then make the circle to fit that. So let's just measure this all the way around. So it's 16 and a quarter. Okay. 
So you take that and you divide it, so 16 and a quarter, divided by 3.14, pi, pi. <laughs> and that gives you 5.17. So I would make it five and a quarter. Just okay. round up? Round. I generally would round up. I mean, you're talking increments of an eighth of an inch, so it's not going to really matter. But I would say 5.17 would be five and a quarter. So this... Uh, mat board should have been cut at five and a quarter. And it's like five and a quarter. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Conversely, if you want to, if you know you want a five and a quarter inch um, circle and you need to know how big to make this, you would just take your five and a quarter times five times 3.14, which is pi. So 16 and, and a half, half is what this would be around. That's amazing. Isn't it? Yep. And that works for any size circle. That's your math lesson for today. Pi Perfect. always works for a circle. Most quilters are afraid of math, but... I am too. If my husband is watching this, he's laughing because <laughs> I had to ask him how to do this. And now I'm, you know, like... Professional. Uh, yeah, right? professional yeah. math person. Yes. So so that's it. All you have to remember is 3.14. Either multiply or divide, depending what you want to do. This one, I decided I wanted to make an oval. So um, I used a long arm ruler to, to make the oval shape. And then I just measured, you can't use the, can't use pi for this one because it's not a circle. So I just measured around this and it's, oh, sorry, <laughs> 20 and a half. I got excited. And so I made this strip 20 and a half. Well, I made it 21 so that I've got my seam allowance. Right, yeah. And don't put your seam right in the middle of the top. Sure. Of all available spots, I picked the worst one, but that's okay. You learned. Yeah, I learned. Um, on the wool, too, I I make it wide enough that I can turn under half an inch instead of a quarter of an inch when you're doing your interfacing part. Okay. Just, I think wool is hard to do a quarter of an inch. Well, to me, it looks like a speed bump when you do a quarter of an inch yeah. seam allowances mm -hmm. on wool. So yeah. a half inch will lay flatter. Right. And then I did a herringbone stitch around the edge of this That's one. That's beautiful. Too. Show so yeah. she gets a nice close-up of that. And then show the side. That's awesome. This is one of my pin cushions as well, right? It is. It's in yeah. Summer Gatherings, okay. the book. Yeah, I think it's a single pattern as well. Okay. Of three pin cushions. Yes. So you can make yeah, there's a ladybug and, and a daisy yeah. and a... Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. And if you don't have, you know, oval rulers, I was thinking you could use a shaper box. If you've got one oh, of those, yeah. that would make a good shape. Yep. Um, yeah, or just Or if you've got shapes. an oval dish or something and just draw around it. Mm -hmm. Now, this one is full. I, I was out of sawdust, so it's full of um, walnut shells. So you can kind of see it's it's a little bit more squishy. I, I really tried hard to uh, fill it as tight as I could, but it still is a little bit more squishy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's okay, but I think the sawdust would have been better. Okay, you just didn't have any more left. I didn't huh? have any more left. All right, what's this baby? <laughs> well, it's just a big one. And I just did pennies on, on wool. You know, it's the same... Yeah, same thing. Same we're we're thing. just doing making the little deal. This one, I'm going to stuff probably with fiber fill because it's so big. Mm -hmm. um, and so I didn't put the extra piece of interfacing in there. You don't really need that if you're doing fiber fiber fill. So I don't know. It just I just wanted to make something with pennies. Awesome. It's gorgeous. And then this one was in a wool box, and mm -hmm. it was supposed oh, to be. Oh, so a, use it as a lid. Uh huh. So it's cool. it. Well, it's going to be yeah. Oh, a short one. A short one. So it'll be like that. Show them that design. That is peony, white peony something. I can't. <laughs> I am so bad at trying to remember the names of everything after 20 years of doing this. This was in the wool box a couple times ago. Mm -hmm. So he's just going to be a short, short pin drum. I love the short one. That was yeah. nice. With less can, stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe a good practice. Well, that's it. All that's right. all well, I know. I'm sure that this is going to be going to get the most likes of any of our videos so far. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. So make sure you like this video so Kathy can see how awesome that she is and for sharing it with you all. So we really appreciate her coming on here today. I'm sure it took a lot of prep. It did. To get, get to get done, just, so. It's nerve-wracking kind of to do this, knowing so people I'll have will to be bro, watching I'll it. have to reward her with some uh, fabric or something. Or <laughs> I'm sure it'll be yeah, fun. Yeah. So um, what I want to just talk about one more thing is that we have lots of videos coming up. And I have a little sneak peek of something that I just want to show you. So this is 
Um, I know people are asking about it, but this is a little quilt. It's made out of a layer cake. It's all folded up, and this is the backing I'm putting on it. But this is a layer cake and then some flannel here. And this is going to be a tutorial quilt where we're going to do um, how to work with flannel, how to do this feather stitch, and then how to hand quilt it as well. And we are going to go through everything. So the reason why it's not based, it, not together around the frame is because we have to do a tutorial on how to baste as well, because I think that is just as important. So if you really love this, you might want to go in and grab a Yuletide Gatherings layer cake or two if you want it a little bit bigger. Um, but this is going to be a fun project with lots of tutorials attached this, to it. This is great. It looks like uh, yeah, that wool. Herring bone. Yeah, yeah it the looks herring bone like looks wool, like wool. It's a pretty nice size piece here. You want to help me? Mm -hmm. here? So you can kind of get the idea of how big it really is. And I sewed this together in three sections to do this. And that was a lot of fun, and it didn't take that long to do either. I was impressed and at you, how you've used big thread. I see five weight. <laughs> yeah, that five weight really it makes a bold it does. statement. For, for this, I'd have to use five. Yeah. I think. Yeah. So that's coming up. So look for this in June sometime, June, July, when that fabric comes out. So I just want to give you a little sneak peek of what Kaylee and I will be working on. So. Again, thank you for joining us here today, and we appreciate you, and keep hanging around, and we'll be bringing you a lot more stuff. Bye now, everyone. Thank you, Kathy, so much. You're welcome. Say bye, Kathy. Bye. <laughs>